I thought about this name because um, I wanted to learn to dive into the learning about celestial forces that affect human beings and I thought that the best way to do this was to kind of daydream about it. Daydreaming is this, you know, this act of imbibing a way of receiving data that's coming from inside. So I just thought that Celestial Data for Daydreaming was a, a good name for the process that I wanted to go into with this show. Imagination is a part of my process and I think this is what daydreaming is. I know, you know, as, as children we are discouraged to daydream um, but the older I get the, the more I appreciate that I daydreamed a lot as a child that you know I was able to exercise this side of my brain that imagines things that that looks into what's not there and I think this is something very human and something it's, it's kind of like a higher power, a higher human power, a higher human capacity. And it's helped me throughout my life. This daydreaming, imagining process has been really a helpful part of my life. I think there's a lot of things in life that, that need to be reimagined, need to be redefined, especially now that we've, we're going through this pandemic, which is such a worldwide um, challenge for everyone. I think it, it questions a lot of things like, you know, what will work be like now? I've, I've had to redefine how I see a lot of things in the world. What, what is parenting like in a world like this? Um, I think a lot of things are passed down to us and we accept it as truth, we accept it as tradition, we accept it as a system, but I think you need a lot of imagination to think of what the world can be so that it can be better. How will life be better now that we've gone through, we're going through a pandemic? And um, I think imagination, you know, daydreaming about what life can be is very, very powerful because this is how we evolve. I mean, we can't just stay still. Nothing stays still. And this is one of the, the best lessons I've learned with going into a deep dive into celestial data for daydreaming, into the paintings for the show, I've realized that nothing stays still. Everything is in motion and the whole process of life is a process of, you know, finding a balance while in motion. And I think this, this pushes us to, to evolve, this pushes us to go towards change and not to try to hold on to to how things have been, how things were. Um, yeah, and I think the nature of my work as an artist has to be towards that, has to, to pull consciousness towards what's better. The most potent thing that it has given me is, is, is a clarity that, that we're walking in a haze, a clarity about uncertainty. Everything is stable, but, but nothing is certain. And we have to find a constant balance with whatever is thrown at us. We, this, this balance that we're going after is a dance a dance with forces, a dance with events, a dance with, with, with life. It's really like how to, how to find a balance while in motion and while everything is changing at a very, very rapid rate.
love has been a constant for me. Um, I feel like if, if that's, you know, the essence of where you're coming from, then everything else just becomes like meaningful. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think during the pandemic, I've, I've tried to, to focus on what will make the world better. Um, during the pandemic, I think I've, I've really also realized the value of hope and how much hope just multiplies resources. Hope and love multiply what we have. I feel like it's very human. It's part of what makes being a human being immeasurable. I mean, you only have to to think of people who who have been put into you know situations where they've had to to go beyond what they think they could do and you know that you know when someone has hope when someone has love their strength multiplies their energy multiplies life force multiplies you can you know you suddenly you have enough you have enough to give more and and i like this this thought of multiplication um, coming from the feeling of love and the feeling of hope um, I feel like only human beings can can do this like this is a, an infinitely generatable feeling and it multiplies our resources our physical resources you know it multiplies our strength and our capacity and stretches us, it stretches our human capacity. And I think it has taken this pandemic to, to let me realize how, how that's something. It's something that you can't take for granted. Painting, we're already dealing with something that's that belongs to the inner side of human beings. Uh, with painting, you reach into the side of your psyche, the side of your brain that deals with the unknown and that you're always exploring, you know, what's never been there before. You're, you're to, the act of creating is pulling something from inside you and bringing it out into the physical so that, you know, this painting that was never been that has never been there before now exists in the world in the physical world so the essence of it is really going into the world of the abstract and pulling something into the physical world now to receive a painting to to be uh, a receptor of these light waves that have been configured a certain way. This goes into you. To receive it, you, you have to go in yourself. The, the painting happens inside the individual that receives the work. Um, you know, I mean, of course, the process is mine. I'm, I come from inside and I'm bringing something out that's my process and and I evolve through that but everyone that sees the work receives the waves the light waves this painting emits the light waves imprinted with my consciousness and and to receive something and to be open to it requires this exercise of going inside. It requires imagination on the part of, of the receiver, of the, of the person who is seeing the painting. Um, because seeing isn't just a matter of, you know, your eyes working. Seeing is a matter of your brain making these connections that, that, 
that activate feelings. And so I can't really control how someone receives the work, but I can control my state of mind while I'm painting and that and I can just hope that that connects. So, so yes, I, I think that it's very possible that something as abstract as painting can generate something abstract as hope uh, inside another human being. In fact, that's, that's why I do it. The seed for creating the paintings for Celestial Data for Daydreaming was really finding the correlation between our daughter's seizures and the faces of the moon. This was really a mind-opening thing for me because um, I realized, yeah, so the moon has this huge effect on the waters of the Earth. The Earth is 75% water, and the human body is 75% water, but the human brain is 78% water. So the moon's faces most probably affect the human brain the most. And so this, this big realization led me into studying cosmic forces. I mean, if, if the moon can affect us that way, then what are the other effects? Like, how does the sun affect us? How, how do the other planets affect us? I mean, it's so easy to just, you know, look at your phone, see your life as uh, the events that are going on right now. But the big thing that I got from doing the paintings for Celestial Data for Daydreaming is that we're part of this huge cosmic harmony. The Earth is part of this huge cosmic dance and we're contributing to this dance. We're not just affected by it. We're, we're pouring out will forces and, and, and doing deeds on Earth. Just breathing, you know, affects your environment. You're not just taking in your environment, you're bringing something into the environment. This, this has really been a big, fascinating study for me. And, you know, it's helped with, with a lot of things. It's helped kind of put my, my own life into perspective that we're really, really immense and really, really small at the same time. The show is for, for anybody who can, who can be open to, to seeing it. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, if, if people just stand in front of it and, and receive it as, you know, just a composition of colors or, or to, it doesn't even matter if they, if they listen to the talk, I feel like if, to this talk or to, to or they, if they read what I write about the paintings, I feel like the paintings have their own gift to give. The paintings should stand on their own and anyone who, who could be in their presence it should be able to receive gifts from it. I would love for people to see the paintings in person because how the, the light of the paintings changes the energy of a space is really something to experience. And, and for the first time, all those paintings are in one room. All those paintings are in one space and they're shining together, reflecting light together. And that, that's something I would love for people to experience. But if, even if you know, they're far away and, and people can only experience the paintings digitally you know, on their phones, I mean, I think 
like the the paintings are seeds. I can only like throw the seeds out there. I, it's not really in my control which seeds sprout. So um, I hope that a lot of people can get to see the paintings. I hope a lot of people are 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 open enough to to receive the feelings that are in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's for everybody. Um, being a painter in the 21st century is definitely, um, you know, a, a strange experience because you're, painting isn't the only thing anymore that's there for people. Like you're there are other mediums that are competing for attention, grabbing consciousness here and there. And um, in a way, it's, it's more difficult to, to just get a lot of people to see the work, but in a way it's easier. But it's just that you're competing with a lot of these other forms of entertainment. On the other side of that, I think something about painting is essentially the same because it's, it's more than just the medium, it's more than just paint on the canvas, it's what an individual with their own experience, their own way of receiving the world, their, their own way of, of living their life, what that individual pulls from himself and arranges into to a configuration of, of colors and sending that out into the world for other people to experience. That, that's essentially, essentially the same. And for me, really thinking like an artist and receiving the world as an artist is more important than being a painter. It should be able to transcend the medium. It's always been like that. It's, it's making, translating something internal, something very spiritual into a physical object that can be seen by others. It's more than communication. It's really like creating from, from an inner experience and creating an outer experience with it. So I think that's more important is, is to, to still maintain the essence of art and to think like an artist, to think in, in terms of, of, you know, evolution, to terms, in terms of a, a bigger human species and to translate that into a physical experience. I think no matter how much the tools change, that will be constant. That will be always a longing for human beings to, to bring this inner essence out. The moon painting is very, very meaningful because, well, it's kind of how this all fascin the the whole fascination for celestial forces began. Um, the moon painting for me is really a study of the human brain. The moon, even during the time of a full moon, when the moon is showing us the full reflection of light from the sun. It's not a full image. The moon is a sphere. We're only seeing half, half of the sphere of the moon, even when we're seeing it at its fullest. So I feel like that has a correlation with the human brain and how, you know, the human race has poured a lot of effort and a lot of resource to, to harness the power 
of just one aspect of the human brain. We're, we're so advanced with science and technology, but really we're, we're still just using 5% of the human brain. And, you know, at that, we're, that's just the left side of the brain. If you like the right side of the brain, which, which um, has to do with imagination, with inspiration, with intuition, which deals with the immeasurable, you know, um, is, is something that we're, we're not even looking into. I think that a lot of human power comes from that. Art definitely comes from that because it's really pulling something from the unknown into the material world. Um, so, so my moon painting is, is an affirmation of that, an affirmation of us harnessing the power of that other side of the brain. The moon, the moon is all about the subconscious, all about feelings and, um, of course, the water of the body, um, everything that flows. Um, so my moon painting is really about that, about it's, it's a, a call to, to, you know, get our hands dirty into this other side of the brain and extend our human capacity and turn data into wisdom. I think I hear her. Maybe we have enough. That's a lot, actually. 